What's going on everyone? Welcome back. In today's video, it's finally time to announce my kayak and kayak build for the 2024 tournament season. Let's go. Recently, we spent some time tearing down our kayak from last year, our Hobie Pro Angler. We needed to bring that back to bone stock, take all my parts and accessories off from it so that we can get it out of the garage. So now we have absolutely no kayak in the garage. But outside of these garage doors is my kayak for the 2024 season. But before I share with you guys my kayak that I'll be running for the season, I have to give a big thank you and a big shout out to Next Adventure. Next Adventure is my dealer here in Oregon in the Pacific Northwest, and they are the reason why I've been able to kayak fish the last two years. For those who don't know, I originally came from the bass boat world. I had a 21 foot bass boat with a 225 Mercury on the back. That was my bread and butter. I fished as a co-angler for many years, and I've always been on the edge of kayak fishing, but never had the opportunity. So two years ago, Next Adventure gave me the opportunity demo some of their kayaks which eventually led to my kayak build that Ike series last year. It's crazy to think how much time has flown by the last couple years but I think the biggest factor in that is that I've just been having fun. It's been fun getting a kayak, having the extra challenge to not be able to go wherever you want like I was doing in a bass boat. I don't know, for me I think the transition from being from a bass boat and going to a kayak was actually fun. I'm actually a pretty slow fisherman. I don't really burn down the bank 100 miles per hour and zigzag all across the lake. I like to find concentrated areas that has quality or the quantity of fish and just picking it apart. Coming from the co-angler world, you know, we only had X amount of rods and a tackle bag, so I was never worried about not having enough tackle in the kayak. Also, I think the commodity in the kayak world is actually way better. I feel like in the bass boat world, a lot of people have big heads, so it's drama. And I feel like in the kayak world, it's a little different, at least from my experience. But I think one of the biggest things is that I'm still getting on the water but I'm cutting my expenses really low. I don't need to put any gas in it to make it run. Just literally need to plug it into a wall charger. It's really nice not to have to go to the gas station just to get out in the water. I have to dump hundreds of dollars just to go fish a body of water all day long. Not having to deal with maintenance. I mean, that's another expense having a boat. I mean, you gotta spend money to keep it up to date so that you can keep going on the water without having any issues. Considering all those factors, I mean, that's the reason why I keep doing it. It is fun and I definitely recommend anybody who has thought about it to give it a shot. With that being said, I'm excited to go into my third year of kayak fishing and this is the kayak I'll be running for the 2024 season. Yep, I'll be running once again a Hobie Pro Angler 14 360 Mike Iconelli edition. Now, let me explain. For those of you who follow me on Instagram and Facebook, you'll know that behind the scenes, I've actually been trying out some other kayaks. I've tried the Old Town Big Water EPDL, I've tried the Native Titan X 12.5, and I've also tried the Old Town Autopilot. But ultimately, those kayaks weren't for me. I have absolutely zero affiliation with Hobie or any other kayak company, so I can run whatever I want. I had an opportunity to try other stuff to maybe jump into it, but honestly, none of them checked all the boxes that I wanted. So now, probably a bunch of you are probably wondering, hey Brandon, why aren't you running the new Hobie 360 XR? And well, that's another thing that we need to discuss. Unfortunately, towards the end of last season, my previous kayak ended up having a leak in it. Where the drive is, there's a little rev net surrounded by plastic. And well, unfortunately, the plastic cracked around it and I ended up getting water in the kayak. Now again, these kayaks are plastic. Anything can happen. It wasn't a big deal for me because Hobie was able to do a full warranty process for that kayak and send me this brand new hole. But again, I had the opportunity to jump something else and well, yeah just didn't check all the boxes. There are some specific things that I liked about this kayak that the other ones did not fulfill. Once I found out that the Hobie 360XR was not coming out with another Ike series, I made a decision to just stick with this replacement hole. That also means that I'll be running the same drive and the same seat because that's how their warranty process works. Which honestly is not a big deal for me because I barely used a kayak last year and I know I took care of that equipment. A lot of you made some really great guesses in some previous videos about what kayak I was gonna run. And like I said, I mean, I tried them all, but 
this one checked all the boxes for my style of fishing and my comfortability. But yeah, we'll be running another Hobie Pro Angler for the next season. I'm excited, we have a fresh new slate. There were some things that I did last year that at the end of the year I wish I didn't do or I wish I would have changed so I get to make it to this kayak. There's a whole bunch of new parts and accessories that I'm excited to throw on this kayak. Again, learning from experience from the last kayak build, I get to make those adjustments and share them with you all, the reason why I did them. Once again, I have absolutely zero, I mean zero affiliation with Hobie. So I had no ties. I could go run whatever kayak I wanted to. Obviously having to do some sort of warranty claim is not fun, but this is not the first one that's ever happened. But for me and my personal experience, it was very great going through the warranty process, just sending them some documentation and boom, I got a brand new hole. So I gotta give Hobie an A plus for customer service there. I know there's a lot of rambling in this video, but I felt like it was my responsibility to give you guys an explanation for this kayak being in my garage. But yeah, I'm excited to get started on this next build, share with you also my experience from last year's builds on the changes that I'll be making, and of course, putting some slime in this kayak. We're so close from hitting 2,000 subscribers on this account, and at 2,000 subscribers, I will be doing a giveaway as a big thank you for all of you who are subscribed to this channel. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing. As always, I appreciate you guys for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.